Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Care Club series. This time the topic is the general care of sleeper orchids. This is the common name given to a very special group of orchids. They have in common a distinct characteristic that uh, makes them different to others in the orchid family. I'm referring to the modified lip uh, into a sleeper shaped pouch, which is a unique feature in the orchid world. They have been divided into five genera. The best known of them in cultivation are Cyperpedium, Paphiopedilum and Phragmipedium. The pouch they have in common is a very interesting feature, a special adaptation to trap insects so that uh, they are forced to fertilize the flowers. These are much appreciated plants by orchid lovers, reason why we have a significant number of channels participating in this care collab. Their names showing on the screen right now. Their names will be mentioned also in the description of this video together with the links to their videos so that you can watch them as well. Of those three genres I mentioned a while ago, I only grow Paphiopedilum, and so that is what I'm talking about. Paphiopedilum is a genus of tropical Asian origin and distributed very widely, mainly from India across tropical Asia to New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. They mostly grow as terrestrial or rather semi-terrestrial, uh, not growing in soil, but uh, rooting in the leaf litter in shaded forest habitats. The variety of Paphiopedalum is such that they had to be divided into sections. I'm not going into details here, but I will leave you a link in the description uh, to an article as a first approach to this matter. It is good to know that some species are warm growers, but many of them prefer intermediate to cool growing conditions. Many need a nighttime drop in temperatures to trigger flower buds. Some require very bright light while others prefer to be shaded. It is true that they can adapt to your home conditions and grow well in the same environment in spite of their differences. However, if you want to take the most of them, it is always advisable to research each individual species and find out their special needs or choose among the ones that better fit to your climate and conditions. These here are my Paphiopedalum. These two are species, Paphiopedalum gratiano here, and this one, Paphiopedum delenati. This other one is Paphiopedilum pinocchio, which is a primary hybrid. I grow them indoors all year round on a west facing window where they get some direct sun late in the afternoon. I treat them all the same way, although they belong to different sections. And that is because my temperatures indoors are intermediate all year round. Let's see how different um, they are in spite of tolerating the same conditions. Paphiopedalum gratricianu is a species, it belongs to the insignia section, uh, which includes species with green strap-shaped leaves. They are cool growing species occurring at the high elevations where winter temperatures can drop to near freezing. They require shaded summer and a bright light during a cool autumn with a drop in temperature at nights. As for Paphiopedalum delenati, this wonderful species from China and Vietnam belongs to the section Parvicepalum. One of the features are the tessellated thin leaves. They grow in lime-rich loam or crevices in limestone rocks, mostly shaded from direct sunlight. They need a cool, dry winter and calcium supplements to be able to bloom the following summer. Paphiopedalum pinocchio is a primary hybrid of two multifloral species of section Coclopetalum. They flower sequentially from the same inflorescence stem 
producing flowers in succession. Although these um, grow in partially shaded situations, they are more tolerant of higher light intensities than are the mottled leaved species. They are intermediate to warm growers, but require six to eight weeks cool period to trigger blooming with a significant drop in nighttime uh, temperatures. There is another important section in the Paphiopedalum genus, which is Barbatum. It includes the warm growers with mottled leaves, such as uh, Paphiopedal modiae. I don't have any orchid of this section, but I felt it is important to mention it here as well. Paphiopedalum are classified as low-light orchids, but um, it very much depends on what low-light means. I think they tolerate lower light but do better in bright shade, in my opinion. Indirect or dappled light conditions are the ideal, although they love a bit of direct sun in the early hours of the day or late afternoon, as long as uh, it does not make them too warm. The roots like to be moist on regular basis and the fuzzy roots do not like to dry out long. They shouldn't be soggy either. I do not fertilize much. I certainly fertilize a lot less than other orchids. But on the other hand, I flush lots of water through the pots to help oxygenate the roots and wash out the salt excess, if any. The roots are super sensitive on this species uh, to salt accumulation and I prefer to err on the side of caution and so I give them low doses of fertilizer around 150 parts per million of my rain mix every week. I uh, also supplement with calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate. Most Paphiopedalum adapted to calcium rich conditions in their native habitats and so they need the calcium to build um, robust cell walls uh, to resist pathogens and to absorb nutrients. Paphiopedalums are not uh, very fussy about humidity, between uh, 40 to 60 percent is enough, at least for my own plants. My Paphiopedalum are potted in bark mixed with aquarium stones for better aeration and pieces of charcoal to prevent acidity in the substrate. This one has some sphagnum moss on top of the pots for, has, for extra humidity as Gratriciano comes from very humid areas where it is wet all the time. And this one, the Delenati, I was informed it likes a bit of acidity in the soil. And so uh, this is the only orchid I have ever added sphagnum moss to the medium. But it seems to be working. <laughs> it has lovely roots. I like to repot every year in the spring or early summer, depending on the time of blooming. Well, I don't want to take any more of your time. This video is already longer than I anticipated. And I thank you very much for watching. Please remember, if you want to, to watch the other videos in this Care Lab, you will find the links in the description. So have a great day, take care, and I'll be seeing you again in the next video.